Hi friends, it's Nathan and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to film a more chatty and personal video and it's about the life lesson that I've learned from this pandemic. Now, I'm fully aware that this pandemic has affected everyone on different intensities and it's perfectly valid to feel frustrated at the situation. I know I was for the past several months, but I also think it's important to find the brighter side of things and based on my experiences, I've really tried to reflect and find the silver lining in this whole situation. So here are life lessons that I've learned from the pandemic. The first lesson is embracing impermanence. And I don't think I've ever thought of this concept or even have used this word impermanence before not until now. Permanence is the idea, is the state that something lasts only for a limited period of time. And this thought actually came to me through meditation, and now I sound like a hippie, but it's true. But there is really no guarantee in life. As Miley Cyrus said, there is no guarantee. I've become so used to things going my way, and that's not to sound spoiled, it's really because I plan everything so thoroughly that changes and errors are so minimal. So when COVID came into full force and cancelled all my plans, it really, really sucked. We're talking travels, internships, and other opportunities that were only available for me in the year of 2020 were all cancelled. And that was something that was really hard for me to process because I did my part. I did my due diligence. I planned it thoroughly. I asked the questions needed. And I just prepared everything and put so much effort in for something that is completely out of my control to take that away. Based on my planning and, I guess, vision, everything should have gone perfectly. But it didn't. And that's not anything to do with me. It's just kind of just the nature of circumstances. Even though logically it makes perfect sense to accept something that is out of my control, that I had no part in, it was still really hard to swallow, specifically that if only statement. If only COVID didn't happen, I would be in this country. If only blank, I would be doing blank. And the really dangerous thing about if statements is that they can run on in your head over and over again. And it doesn't help that we're always inside, allowing our minds to play these scenarios on and on. So I really had to break away from those if only statements. It took some time, but I've accepted that plans change in a way that's completely out of my control. But what I can control is my attitude, how I'm looking at the situation. So trying to stay optimistic and just believing that everything will work itself out, hopefully, and just keep carrying on and life will work itself out. The second lesson I learned is that it's okay to do nothing. I've always been an individual that loves being busy. I hunger for it. It's that adrenaline, that rush, that go, go, go mentality that I love. And if I'm not busy, I'll try to find something to make me busy. And over these past years, I told myself that if I'm not doing anything, I'm wasting time, which is incredibly toxic. An example to reinforce my nature is how it takes me months to finish a TV show. And that's because I can't watch an episode just for the sake of watching an episode. I have to be doing something else, either eating or cleaning my room, anything. And that, that has to be a trade-off. So I'm hitting two birds with one stone. Our society tells us that busyness equals success. When someone asks you, how was your week? What do you often say? Oh yeah, it was good. It was busy. You know, busy. It was busy. That's what we always say. And acting as if it's some sort of validation. But when everything shut down because of COVID, I wasn't busy anymore. And honestly, I felt out of place. I was watching more YouTube videos. My iPhone screen time shot up. I think I was at like six hours a day. And it just was so unlike me that I felt guilty. I felt guilty that I was doing these things and I felt like I should be doing other stuff, that I'm wasting my time. So I really tried to ask myself, Nathan, why were you feeling guilty? And I had to take it into perspective to finally understand why. I was comparing myself when I was back in school, I was grinding, I was working hard, I was getting stuff done, versus now I wasn't. We are in a different time. Five months ago, life was not how it was now. We are in a once in a lifetime pandemic. It really doesn't happen. And the fact that it's happening right now, we should take the opportunity of it. You know, when are we ever going to be able to not do anything, to just have the time to stay at home with family and 
just relax. So I told myself, you know, hey Nathan, it's okay to not make a to-do list for the day. It's okay to watch more than one episode in a row. And this is what a healthy workplace balance looks like. You know, giving yourself the time, giving yourself breaks because you deserve it. This pandemic has caused us so much stress, so much anxiety that we just need to relax a little bit. Allow us to be kids again. Allow us to have fun and to enjoy things that we previously didn't have time for. And the last lesson is that interaction is necessary. Another thing about me is that I consider myself a pretty independent individual. And this is not the same as being an introvert because I'm very much an extrovert. What I mean is that I like my own space. I value me time. A little bit of background for you, but I realized that I was more independent than I originally thought when I went into university and there was no clear distinction between um, class, between like school and home. So back in high school, I would go to school, I would be with my friends and then I would come home and I would just be in my room and have that alone time. And I didn't know how much I valued that until it changed. So in university, I went to class with friends. I studied with friends. I chilled in the dorms with friends. Every single moment I was with people. And that was pretty exhausting for someone like me who was used to after 3.30 that I would, you know, be home alone and just in my own space. It was a big change. And that's when I really realized that moments of independence were so critical to my well-being. And so in second year, I really tried to go back to that high school model as much as possible. I would go to class with friends as usual, but I would study alone because back in high school, I studied in my room. After studying in the library, I would go back to my room and maybe for the rest of the evening, I would just chill by myself or I would go out with friends. And that was a system that worked really, really well for me. But when school closed and quarantine began, that aspect of social interaction was no longer there. And at first I didn't think much about it, I just carried on, you know, whatever. I didn't realize the significance of it until several months in when I started to feel really lonely. I miss seeing faces, I missed um, laughing with friends, and I miss just those moments and that I didn't think that really meant that much at the time. I've always thought, you know, I'm an independent person, so I didn't think that it would affect me, but it really did. So I tried to do FaceTime calls, and then when quarantine was lifted, I made plans with friends for lunch and dinners and to go out, and it, that is what I miss, and that is what we need as humans. I forgot that humans are social creatures, and as much as I value my alone time, equally, I need to value the social interaction. It's equally as important. And even on the topic of mental health, you know, yes, definitely reserve time for yourself, but also we need people, you know what I mean? We're not designed to live life alone. We're not the solitary, I don't even know what animal is, a shark. We are not a solitary shark just swims for the rest of its life, you know? We need those relationships. We need those moments. And through this, I realized that I need my alone time, definitely need my alone time, but equally, I also need the social interaction. And it's that balance that is so key. This pandemic has been difficult for everyone, and it's a lot easier to blame people and be bitter and to point fingers than it is to find the positive outlook in all of this. We need to remember that experiencing a pandemic is an incredibly rare occasion. We've been put into positions that we've never been in before. We've been forced to make decisions that we weren't ready for. And from that nature, there's a lot to learn. I encourage you to reflect on these past few months and really see what COVID has taught you, whether it's about yourself, others, the world, really anything. How has this pandemic changed your viewpoints? How has this made you question things that you did prior? Ask yourself those questions and those lessons will naturally form. And trust me, you might be quite surprised as to what comes up. If you like this more chatty and personal video, give it a like. It was a lot of fun for me to kind of share more intimate parts of my life with you guys. Hopefully I can do that again in future videos. I'd love to hear what you guys have learned from this pandemic. I reply to every single comment and make sure to subscribe for more educational and lifestyle content. Hit the bell notification while you're at it so that you get notified every time I post a new video. Lastly, follow me on Instagram. My profile is linked in this description box below. That's it for me and I'll see you friends in the next video. Bye.